Alright, what's up guys? It's Out for Hogs here again. And today, instead of going bass fishing, I'm going to show you guys how to tie a fly. This fly is probably my favorite fly in the flats. It's called the EP crab, so let's go ahead and get into it. Alright guys, we're going to go ahead and get started tying the EP grab. Alright, so step one, get your thread, start at the eye of the hook, and wrap all the way down to the start of the hook bend. And if you're using thicker thread, make sure not to do as many wraps, but I'm using fairly thin thread. And then I'll go all the way back up to the top. Alright, make sure to cut off your axis, scissors, bang, now you've got your thread all the way up. You can get your eye, I'm just using medium size, lead eyes, these are 7 and 32 quarters of an ounce. So we're going to go ahead and get this little eye, put it about... Put it a little bit far from the eye because you're going to want to put a weed guard at the end. You're going to go ahead and wrap that eye in. Butterfish that will eat this, they will tear it up if they get the chance. Make sure it's pretty secured. I'd say if you can get it with your fingers and m try and move it and it doesn't move, then you're good. Alright, so for step two, we're going to take the hook bend all the way back down. And we're going to get two pieces of hackle. And the reason I use two pieces of hackle is because it's somewhat stiff and it looks just like crab claws, just going through the water. So what we'll do is we'll get our first piece of hackle and tie it tilted to one side the side that you want it to go. And just wrap that in. And as you can see it's going a little bit to the left which is perfect. And we're going to get that second piece of hackle and do just the opposite. Put it facing the other side. Wrap that in. And there we go. Just like that, going to the side. Maybe stroke them and push them how you want them. So now that we've got our two pieces of hackle in, we'll start with the EP fibers. And this will literally, when you cast this on redfish, hopefully you might probably going to be sight fishing. It's a great sight fishing fly. And be casting it on those redfish and it will just sit with those claws facing upward and those redfish cannot not eat this. I mean it's crazy. So for this for this crab I'm gonna try and imitate just a regular old blue crab in the flats. We're gonna use a 10 EP fiber and what you wanna do is you wanna get about about a, less than a dime in diameter. Just pull out one whole strand. There's the strand. That's a little bit too much. Thin it out. There we go. About like that. And what you're going to do is you're going to do X wraps. So what you want to do is you're going to put it around once. Pull it down all the way down to where you want it. Then go around a second time. And it'll make an X. And what you're going to do is just wrap it down. Tighten that. Tighten that up. Make sure you don't get any fibers in the hook. Or wrap them in. And there you go. There's the first strand. And you're going to probably do, I'd say, five or six strands. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and trim it down a little bit so it doesn't get in the way. And of course, we'll trim it down more later. 
Alright, so there's strand one. Go ahead and trim strand two, or part two. That'll do just fine. You can, right now, before you've tightened it down all the way, you can pull it however you want it. And this, this one strand that you got should last you the whole fly. So just keep that aside. And now you're going to need your rubber legs. These are just a brown, brown rubber leg, really natural. And we're going to go ahead and take one leg off. And we're going to do the same thing as the EP fiber, just an X wrap. Pretty simple. Pull back the fibers. Get that leg. Oh, see, this is the problem with the EPR fibers, is they'll get everywhere. You gotta be careful. Get the leg in there. Bang, bang. And just wrap it in. And pull them how you want them. Alright, so there's the first set of legs. And you can go ahead and trim them if you want. I'm going to go ahead and do it just because it'll get in the way. And you can simply rest it on top of the fibers. This is a pretty simple fly to tie. It's kind of repetitive. But it does take some time because of how repetitive it is. So now you're going to go ahead and get the EP fibers. And we're going to do another X wrap. Just right by the legs. You want it to be as close as you can without messing up. Alright, so we have now completed putting all the fibers in and all the legs. So what you're going to want to do is I usually flip it over, get all those legs and I'll try and move them around the fibers and put them down towards the bottom. Align these fibers, make sure you have them as even as you want before you get them all set. Pull all the fibers through the legs. All right. You can see there's lots of fibers sticking everywhere. You'll get to clean that up at the end. So get your scissors. Just cut in a circle. And pull them out. There we go. That's pretty good. I'm gonna trim a little bit more in the back and some in the front. All right. So there we go. Now we've got fairly aligned up. It's the way I want it. And we're gonna go ahead and get our zappa yap. Open that up. Mine's pretty screwed up. And we're going to pull down these fibers. Go right down the middle. And also on the eye, all the way up there. Just so that fly becomes a little more, a lot more actually, a lot more durable. Go ahead and let that dry. And while it's drying, you can go ahead and trim up the legs. However you would like them, lengthwise. I would recommend making them stick out about a few centimeters outside the body so they stick out. Just like this. Move them up. So there we go, trim them up a little bit more, however you'd like. I like to make them somewhat small. And also the redfish won't care too much about how it looks. If you mess up a little bit, they, they don't really care. They see it, and it looks kind of like a crab, they'll probably eat it. 
and I'll go ahead and do a little knot to hold it down. Just a little loop. So now, after you've let everything dry and settle, you've got this weed guard, 25 pound mason hard type nylon, I'm going to get about 4 or 5 inches, snip that, alright, so here's the mono, and what I like to do just for a little extra decoration is I'll get a sharpie, and I'll put little black lines all over this, makes it kind of cool. Alright, and this is what the weed guard will look like. I hope you can see those little black, small black dashes all throughout the weed guard. And we're going to make a V-shaped weed guard. So we're going to go ahead and fold it just like that. Make a little, make a little dimension in it so it stays like that. And it should loop around each other. And we'll turn the fly over. Line it in your vise properly. Alright. And I'll put it, loop it around the hook eye. And I'll just tighten that in. As you can see, we got ourselves a little weed guard. And right now it's, you can mess with it until you have it properly. There we go. Now what I'll do is cut that extra. You know I like to let mine almost touch because where I'm fishing there's quite a bit of grass. So there we go, there's the weed guard on. Get your zappa gap again. Open it up if it doesn't glue together. There we go. And put a little bit right where you just made that weed guard. And that should be about it. You can trim it up. Let that dry. Trim it up. Do a few a few more knots or whip finish it, whatever you'd like. I just this is just faster for me. Just knot it down.